Hey folks, James Abrinio coming to you from Abrinio Law, your Northern Virginia personal injury and criminal defense law firm. So let's say you were involved in a car accident and the negligent driver, the defendant, the person that caused your accident was issued a criminal summons or a traffic ticket for their behavior that ended up leading to the accident, that ended up leading to your injuries. And you're wondering what should you be doing regarding making sure that the person that caused your injury is properly prosecuted, that the case properly proceeds through court, uh, that the courts handle it appropriately. Should you just let uh, bygones be bygones and be told what to do, take a passive approach? Or should you be proactive in um, asserting your rights in order to make sure that the case is properly prosecuted and handled in the criminal court? Um, my answer is actually you need to, in my view, particularly if you've been devastatingly injured, if you have ca catastrophic injuries, you need to take a more proactive approach. Uh, and the reason I'm saying this is I actually have a unique perspective in that I do both personal injury and criminal defense. Uh, again, if you go to our website, you can see that we've done a lot of articles and videos about both areas of law. I represent injured victims, but I also represent people charged with crimes as well. So I see how the case happens on the criminal traffic side. I see the implications of when a key witness, particularly an injury victim, is not properly um, uh, brought before the court, is not properly subpoenaed, not properly filled in about the case, and how devastating that can be for a prosecution. So when I'm thinking about my injury victim and the person that caused their accident and caused their injuries, I know that it's vital that uh, if the case is going to go forward, that they need to be involved. So what does this mean? I'm not saying that you should be rushing the courthouse doors every day. My recommendation is, first of all, make sure that you build a good rapport with law enforcement. Uh, in the case, there should be an investigating officer that you should have contact with. You should get their card. You should get their information. And my recommendation is to stay in contact with them. Let them know that you're a human being. Uh, keep them up to speed as far as what your injuries are. If they ask you questions, uh, make sure that you're available to answer those. If they're asking you to come to court, make sure that you are available for that. But also let them know that you're, you want to make sure that the case proceeds. Um, it's important to you. Somebody's affected your life and you want to make sure that your rights are instilled. And just to be clear, under the Virginia Constitution, as an injury victim uh, in criminal court, uh, victims have a constitutional right to be involved in the prosecution. They have a right to be given updates on uh, court proceedings. And if the case makes it up to circuit court, they have, even have a right to provide a victim statement. So um, the victim's involvement in the criminal prosecution process is so vital that it's actually in our Constitution. So law enforcement should know this. If they don't, uh, you know, you can have a discussion with them about that. But I also tell people, look, don't be uh, disrespectful of law enforcement time. If they're responding to you timely, if they're giving you due, due time, don't blow up their phone. Don't text them constantly. Don't email them all the time. Um, you know, I always tell people you get more with honey than you do with salt. Um, so to the extent that you can uh, compliment them for their hard work and, and make sure that uh, you appreciate and you let them know that you're appreciating their efforts, um, you know, I think that goes a long way. Now, what happens in a situation where law enforcement's not responding to you? You have an investigator that simply won't respond. Um, I'm not saying they have to call you back immediately. Um, they're very busy. They have a lot of work to do. They have a lot of cases to work on. But um, if they're not responding to you at all, then take efforts. You can reach out to um, uh, the station that they're from to see if they're getting your messages. Um, if it becomes uh, ridiculous that they're simply not responding to you at all, um, you can always ask to speak to a supervisor. Again, be cautious about this. You don't want to offend anybody, especially if um, it's not going to be persuasive or helpful. Um, you can also call the Commonwealth Attorney's Office if you're getting nowhere because criminal cases, at least, are prosecuted usually by the prosecutor's office. Here we call that the Commonwealth Attorney's Office. Um, you can um, reach out to them to see what's going on. Uh, in the 
my website uh, that, that I've corresponded this video with, I've also showed you how you can go online to check the defendant's court process. If the case is in the general district court, you can see exactly what hearings are happening and when, so you can keep up to speed as to when those are going to be happening. But hopefully law enforcement's keeping you up uh, to date as far as when the next court date is, what is that next court date? Are you needed? Do you need to be subpoenaed? Um, if and when you end up going to court, um, you likely will, you, you may very well have to testify. It really depends. If, if, if I represent you, if my firm represents you, we'll walk you through how that process works. But the long and short of it is law enforcement and the prosecutor should be helping you uh, tell your story if you need to testify, if there's other information that you need to provide, like insurance information uh, and things like that, factual information, obviously, um, they'll, they'll give you that information. But if I'm representing you, then we'll help coordinate that. Now, why does it matter? Why does it matter what happens to um, the person that caused your injuries? Um, why does it matter if they're convicted and all that? Now, I will give a caveat. If you suffer devastating injuries, you're likely never going to be happy about what happens to the defendant in a particular case, um, particularly if they're charged with like a reckless driving or a traffic offense. Um, you're never going to be happy because your life has been severely affected and they're essentially looking at my, maybe a criminal conviction, maybe a fine, probably not jail time unless there's something like a DUI involved or something more egregious than essentially an accident. Um, and so you're not going to be happy about the outcome. It's usually, um, it's simply at the end of the day, it's not the right form. And that's really what the civil court is for, particularly if the accident was due to negligence and not criminal culpability, not intentional act, not they're trying to actually intentionally try to hurt you. If that's the case, then that's a different world. But if we're talking about the standard car accident case where there's a reckless driving or failure to yield, likely what happens in the criminal court and traffic court is not going to be that groundbreaking, that earth shattering. At the end of the day, the reason it matters is, uh, at least in my view, oftentimes you're in a better position if the defendant uh, has a lesser serious conviction, but then you can use their plea in the civil court. So prime example, somebody's charged with a reckless driving, which under Virginia law is a criminal charge, um, but an offer of um, uh, improper driving is made and, and they'll plead guilty to improper driving. Many times that's a good result for an injury victim because if they plead guilty to the improper driving, that plea is acknowledgement of improper beha driving behavior. We can then use that in the civil court. Now, let's say you want to push forward with a reckless driving conviction so at least they're um, convicted of a criminal offense. Well, if they plead not guilty, even if they are convicted, we can no longer use that that uh, that case, that criminal case, in the civil case because they pled not guilty. So um, that's not admissible. What's admissible is not the outcome of the, the case. It's what they pled guilty to or acknowledged sufficient facts of guilt to. So uh, it may be a situation where, though you want something uh, more serious in the outcome to happen against the defendant, uh, for civil purposes, it may be better if it's not as bad. Um, so those are some of the things that you need to be thinking about um, when it comes to if the defendant is charged in your case. Again, just to sum it up, you want to be proactive. You want to be your own advocate. But you don't want to be overly aggressive with law enforcement. You want to demonstrate that you appreciate their efforts. Uh, but you also don't want to be left out of the loop. I can tell you I've had many cases where I'll talk to a potential client. I'll say what happened in court, and they'll say, I don't know. I'll then check the system only to find out it was dismissed. We don't know why, probably because nobody was subpoenaed. Um, so hopefully this is useful. If you have other questions, feel free to reach out to us, www.abrenio.law.com. You can shoot me an email, james at abrenio.law.com, or give us a call, phone number 703-570-4180. Wish you guys the best. Take care.